for moderating the discussion. Now, let us move right away to the next session. The subject is sustainable tourism development, new challenges and perspectives. We have Mr. Dimitrios Buchalis with us, Professor of Tourism and Hospitality Strategy and Innovation from the Bournemouth University, Mr. Alex Pipilis, Head of Hospitality and Business Development of Prodea, uh, Eleni Andreadis, Director of Sustainability and CSR from Sun Ecos Group, and the moderator will be Mr. Theodoros Papakostadinou, a partner consulting from Deloitte. You have the floor. Please observe the time. Thank you. Good morning to all. My name is Thodoris Papakostadinou. I am a strategist partner of Deloitte in charge of the sector of hospitality, and I have the joy to coordinate this uh, uh, panel. The participants have already been introduced by Mr. Spirtunia, so let us proceed. Madam Andreadis will join us virtually. There she is. The important subject of our discussion. Good morning, Madam Andreadis. Andreadis. The subject concerns sustainable tourism development of our country. And of course, we could not lack uh, tourism from uh, sustainability of our economy, which according to the latest uh, data, participates uh, by 36% of GDP and 37% approximately in employment. Beyond the very positive contribution of, of tourism and economy, we should not forget the extremely important footprint uh, it bears on the environment and society. According to World Travel and Tourism Council, tourism is uh, accountable for more than 10% of CO2 emissions, while the environmental program of uh, the UN estimates in that in a business as usual scenario, global tourism will increase by 154% in energy consumption, 131% in CO2 emissions, 152% in water consumption, and 140% in solid waste by 2050. Furthermore, there are many examples of the pressure exerted on local societies. We know the examples of Barcelona, of Venice, but also in Greece, I would say. Uh, the example is the lack of uh, affordable accommodation for teachers, uh, physicians, policemen in tourism places. So it seems that there's a, it's very difficult balance of sustainable tourism development, especially when it is uh, in, uh, interpreted differently from various uh, involved parties. Mr. Buchalis, Professor, I would like to start with you. The research and consultancy experience in the subject in the development and management of tourism destinations is holistic, not only extended, but also holistic. Could you please analyze, in the limited time we have, what it means eventually sustainable tourism development for a country? What are the parameters, the challenges, and the opportunities, given the ever-increasing emphasis given on sustainability by the travelers when they select their destinations? I believe you have prepared a presentation, if I'm not mistaken. So you have the floor. Yes, thank you. Yes, one cannot speak of tourism in such a limited time and be credible in what one is to say. Anyway, what we, what I see, listening to the minister beforehand, and when we speak of digitization of economy, the way we can operate in uh, an environment that will support destinations and will support local economy and society is a smart way. That is technology that helps the sustainability. I have brought uh, certain slides from my research, and especially from the Encyclopedia of Tourist Management and Marketing, a huge opus with uh, 1,200 uh, entries that we published in 2023, 2022. And the result uh, is this 
pyramid that you are to see. Tourism is a system that operates and in order to operate in sustainability, the system must uh, support the resources entering the system and produce value for all the stakeholders. Furthermore, in order for tourism to operate, the various layers The notion of what happens in the market, what happens in the extrovert uh, factors and technology must tie all those things so as to operate smartly. I give you the QR code so if you can see in a more detail, you can see it there. So smartness actually gives us the possibility for the network of tourism to operate in an integrated way uh, in coordination with the economy. If we optimize the needs of economy, then we've got sustainable development. And of course, technology is critical in order for this to operate. We hear a lot of uh, wishful thinking. I've been involved in tourism for 42 years. 35 years I have been conducting surveys and research on tourism. Is Greece sustainable? Is Athens sustainable? This is what we promise. But what is it that we offer? What is the reality? How can we move from the desired image to to the desired image. Many people th speak of over-tourism, but there's no such thing. There's badly managed tourism. There's tourism when there's no plan. There's tourism causing problems for the local residents and all the users of the area. If we do not have satisfied residents, we don't have satisfied tourists. And these are basics. The photo list that just issued says that Athens will be one of the cities where tourists should not go, should not visit, because it's not well managed. Unless we learn how to manage well, we will not be able to operate correctly. So smart managing gives us the possibility to do an optimization of the resources so as to operate correctly for all and have added value for that. I will not tell you, we've got actually the physical layer where we create tourism, which has to do with the resources available. We've got a data lay layer and we've got a technical layer, a business layer and experience layer. If those two things do not operate correctly, we cannot have sustainable tourism. And we've got uh, the man-centered The digital environment, all that has to do with the way the tourism all operates in environment in real times. It's what we say, tourism of now, here and now. And in order to bring this in sustainability, we actually want tourists, local residents, and the destination to operate correctly and smoothly. The last uh, static contact is, is how tourism the way the environmental factor is being supported by various sustainable development goals. And this is a list I will not detail you. You can see it online on how tourism can help social, economic and environmental uh, conditions. I will leave you with that. Anyone who needs more or want the presentation, please come in contact with me. Thank you. Thank you, Professor. Mr. Andrea, Madam Andreadis, I give you the floor. Sun Ecos is a group in the foreground in the field of sustainability. Sunny Resort is the first resort in Greece with a zero footprint. And you are much awarded a group on issues of sustainability. It would be most interesting to understand how focusing on sustainability and implementation of the ESG criteria supports the overall strategic development of the group and its successful course. Could you say something more on the programs and the actions it operates? And is it at the end of the day some things that have greater impact 
on the results of the group. Thank you very much. Thank you for the invitation. I'm really sorry for not being able to be there with you. Our program started in our company 15 years ago. Of course, it has been developed and evolved ever since, thanks to the ESG department that is in the heart of our strategy. In the limited time I have, I would like to mention some of the basic objectives. The triple zero, as we call it. Zero carbon footprint by 2030. And if you take into account that at the European level, this target has been sent for 2050, so our objective is a quite an ambitious one on which we work uh, very intensively. We invest in RES, we electrify our vehicles, and many more. Moreover, no more single-use plastic and zero waste ending in Latfields. At the same time, there is a spectrum of other programs having to do with procurements, with the entire supply chain, and at the same time, with the provision of support to the local community. We support over 40 local organizations, always focusing on vulnerable families and on children, schools, uh, cultural organizations, and many others. And all of these initiatives actually make uh, this uh, picture. In order to select some of these, of course, it depends on the stakeholder. What can one definitely say is that uh, all the stakeholders, uh, including investors, uh, borrowers, customers, and employees, have uh, demands when it comes to sustainability. Starting with the investors, there are studies uh, that confirm that the market rewards the companies that have a better performance when it comes to ESG. Of course, we can talk about why this is the case and whether the companies that have more advanced performance and more advanced programs are the ones to be rewarded. However, is that the investors actually reward these companies that have risk management programs. And I would like to give you an example from the hotel sector. Investments in RES offer to the hoteliers a better management of the fluctuation of energy prices. At the same time, the employees, and I heard the minister talking about the difficulties of finding employees, are interested in sustainability issues. Young people want to work in companies that have environmentally friendly programs. That is why we have followed this approach in a company, and uh, we want to make a company that uh, actually offers uh, significantly when it comes to the environment and, of course, the travelers. Based on the recent study of Booking.com that included uh, over 33,000 travelers from 35 countries, uh, over 75% of the travelers want to travel in a more sustainable way. And some ask, are they willing to pay more? Of course, the answer is more complex. What they do is that they expect the company to offer services in a more sustainable way. And this is exactly where the private sector, but also the public sector, we could talk about that, and the local authorities could do in order to offer this uh, sustainable destination. What is certain is that the interest is out there and our customers reward uh, our choices and uh, 20% of our customers, and this is based on the questionnaires that we have sent out, uh, questions that included questions on gastronomy and many other things, uh, actually focus on sustainability, so this proves that the interest is increasing. Moreover, on B-Spot, which is the most interactive spot on bees, which also provides information on how to protect them and excursions, we can see that the interest is very high. You talked about the investors, and uh, that's why I would like now to move on to Mr. Pipilis. Dear Alexis, uh, Prodea is uh, the biggest company investing uh, in uh, 
real in hospitality and we know that uh, the hospitality sector is a priority for you just like the green buildings are could you tell us more about the role of sustainability in your decisions how do you integrate sustainability in your strategy in the hospitality sector thank you very much for the invitation once again i believe that sustainability on the part of the investor pertains to three different dimensions how you produce your product, how you finance your product, and how you operate this product, especially in the hospitality sector where you have this operating part included. If we take a brief look to all three of these, I believe that the production side, the construction, if you like, is associated with the certificates that prove that uh, the construction processes uh, were green, that the energy footprint of the building during the construction and uh, during the life cycle of the building uh, is reduced or at least uh, complies with the ESG principles. This is something that uh, we have started many years ago. As you said, we are the bigger owner of uh, green uh, properties in Greece, the green being the key word. Our view is to continue growing our portfolio and focusing on green transition. And why should someone do that? It is obvious that the cost of building something that is complying with the green transition may be slightly higher compared to building a brown building. However, this is also associated with the way that you can get financing, the way that your investors perceive you, the way that uh, other companies are interested in the properties you have. We can see European uh, countries uh, and uh, we can see that on the EU taxonomy having to do with ESG, we know that the multinational is not uh, willing to operate in a brown building since uh, they do not have the approval nor the right to do that. So if someone wishes to create a product that is attractive for Greece, for Europe and uh, for the entire world, uh, they need to create a product that is future proof. This pertains to the construction side. Now, let's talk about financing. I believe that uh, all previous speakers and uh, the ministers said that the green transition is the central pillar of uh, the national strategy. Green buildings uh, are financed in a more attractive terms, so only on the basis of uh, investment benefits, it's better to build a green building rather than a brown one. And the last part, which was also elaborated by Ms. Andreadi, pertains to the operation part. We fully agree with the strategy described previously. We believe that uh, you have better product. Uh, you can see that this product is appreciated by the customer. If you have repeat clients, it uh, is a very good indication of that. Uh, we are in favor of uh, quality over quantity. And many of the things of Mr. Buchalis actually refer to that. So creating a sustainable product means that you will have a better supply because you will have far greater demand. So these are the three basic pillars and I hope we will be successful. I wish and I hope you will be. And now we can <coughs> proceed to the second round of questions. So you have two minutes each. I would like to talk about the future and I will start with you, Mr. Buchalis. Greece has been left behind as a destination and always in relation to sustainability, even though we have traditionally speaking one of the most powerful markets. Most of the countries and destinations are trying to find their pacing in sustainability, so maybe it is now the time to take a leading role in that. Do you believe that we can do it and which must be the strategies and priorities we need to take in this direction? Look, I believe that Greece hasn't been left behind. I travel a lot in Asia and around the world, South America. So if you take a look at some other practices that are implemented outside Europe and outside the North Hemisphere, you realize that things are rather more difficult there. We have some wonderful examples. 
I will mention ECOS, not because we have Ms. Andreadis with us, but because they are doing an excellent work. Cocotos, Ineluda, Metaxas. There are some groups that for many years have been investing in this direction and they have significant know-how. What I tell to the rest of the hoteliers is to copy them. Look what they're doing, copy them. The problem with sustainability is that it has become the new religion. Everyone is talking about sustainability, but they don't really understand what it is about. We are still using plastic. Take a look at that. Plastic is everywhere. Practices are not sustainable, but still, we keep on talking about sustainability and even our clients are not ready. They may say that they are, but uh, in practice, they aren't. If you take a look at the, how they leave the room uh, when uh, they check out uh, what the waste they leave behind, uh, you will see that uh, there is a distance between theory and practice. So we need to start explaining uh, sustainability gradually. Each part of sustainability needs to be clearly explained. Then we need to predict what will happen, design the future, and then produce the future. There is a technology right now, according to which when you have a plated plate, There is a technology that actually scans what's left, and if no one is eating broccoli, then you remove broccoli from the menu or you replace it with something else. There are many solutions out there that we could use, but the most important thing we need to do is to stop perceiving sustainability as a religion. We need to become more practical, bottom-up, And we need to listen to our children. The children are far more sensitized, environmentally speaking, than the adults. And many times, the children are the ones who make the difference. Yes, and this was a good relay for me. Ms. Andrea, the recent study we conducted in Deloitte with over 1,500 businesses showed that businesses that have a turnover of less than 10 million euros have difficulties in meeting the challenges stemming from sustainability since they don't have the resources nor the know-how. At the same time, these businesses are the more in numbers and they have the greatest footprint on the tourism sector. So what can be done for these small and medium enterprises since they need to enter this sustainability stage? Can anything be done? Do you have any thoughts, any priorities that we could set? The truth is that the challenge for a small business that in order to establish a holistic uh, strategy of ESG, one must have a dedicated team on that. You need uh, time, education, investment. Nevertheless, I believe that there are instruments, and I'll start uh, with uh, the uh, implementation of the law and what uh, an excellent tool some laws uh, can be. For instance, the pollutant pays, which is most topical, it has been discussed about recycling and waste bins. If this is properly implemented, it offers a big uh, financial incentive for responsi responsible uh, management of waste, while now it merely relies on the sensitiv sensitivity of everyone. We recycle and compost 100% of our organic waste, of our gardeners. This has no financial benefit for our company until this is imposed and we have a reduction of the municipal dues. Another example, our hotel in Spain, in Mallorca, Icos Porto Pedro, the creation of a cyclic economy plan is something uh, compulsory. And similarly, the, the pools can only be heated through RES. So we see the important role that the state can play and local administration so as to set the appropriate framework for the businessman, because this is also an educative role. But leaving that behind and focusing on what each uh, hotelier can do. 
There are many things that one can do, even with minimal resources. We must uh, boost, uh, we must focus uh, on uh, education there, and we have a role to play. As, for instance, we financed uh, a survey, the well-known digital means, and what we do so as to channel best, prax uh, best practice, 20 plus 1 examples of hoteliers that do positive steps towards sustainability with examples and plans that could be uh, implemented elsewhere. So I consider that us as well and other companies, the big ones, we do have also our responsibility to relay the torch and show what we can share and all those involved in tourism. There are some good practices. Doesn't mean necessarily we have to have huge investment and the available certifications, accreditations in the market offer an excellent roadmap on how one can uh, see where one may, must focus so as to know where one should be headed to. To give you some examples for those who wonder perhaps, it's a small cost for the replacement of one use plastic. We, for instance, have no plastic in our premises. Our uh, customers uh, can refill uh, their glasses or bottles uh, through um, Tabs we have. All these have direct uh, financial uh, benefit. They are not huge, but a strategy is needed, which uh, is a prerequisite for everything, along with training. Thank you. Let me give the floor now to Mr. Pippi Lee. So last question. Could uh, sustainability be a tool for our country so as to further boost and give a long-term horizon of the attractiveness of investment environment. What are the main priorities that we might set? Well, thank you. I'll be brief. That's a difficult question. It's a whole chapter, but anyway, I believe that we are quite lucky as a country where we are in this land plot with sea and sun, we have all the basics uh, to uh, be base our energy transition. This is a comparative advantage we have, of course. Something that the country traditionally had not managed to do, that is uh, extend the tourist season. It will greatly uh, assist uh, the sustainability of our tourism development to have a more scattered uh, tourist uh, product. That is uh, the the tourists coming uh, throughout around the year, not solely within these three months, to have other destinations. And this will help a cyclical economy, will, will help uh, small uh, economies to have mountainous areas of Peloponnese, of Macedonia, uh, become tourism uh, destinations. If one has uh, uh, seasonal uh, resorts for summer and another one for winter, one can use the same uh, human resources and thus we can develop quality control, tourist product and so forth. So we do have the appropriate uh, mixture, we have the appropriate mindset gradually, we have the funding tools, so it's up to each investor to complete all that. Thank you. I warmly thank you all. I apologize, we took a little bit more time than allocated. Have a nice day. I'd like to thank 